Welcome to Upfront and Honest Reviews. Today is July 18th, 2021. Today I am reviewing the Sony Xperia Ear Duo True Wireless Headset. When the headset is fully charged, both lights will be green as you see here. Eventually, both lights will turn off. Usually it's the left light and then the right. But this is to let you know that the headset is fully charged. The indicator light for the case is on the back. You can charge the headset from the case even if it's not plugged in. So I'll turn the case around and show you the back. On the back you have the type C port and the indicator light for the case. As you can see both of the lights on both the earpieces are lit up green to let me know that the headset is fully charged. Those lights will go off. Again, usually it's the left and then the right. I would not suggest taking off the little piece of plastic that you see there. It's easier to control the volume. And once you take it off and try to put it back on, you get what you see here, which is that the plastic won't lay flat and it might lift up at one of the edges, but it will stick. And so I am going to leave it on so that it's easier for me to control the volume and the tap controls. The headset is not very easy to put in your ear. You have to practice for a few days. And then after a while, you'll be able to put on each piece without using a mirror or your front face camera or anything that you would need to see that you're putting in your headset. It's very loud for music and phone calls, very clear. I am really happy with the sound quality. In the bass area, it's a little low, but when you listen to, let's say like hard rock or heavy metal or something like that, the sound quality is very clear and uh, it's great. You can hear all the instruments. I love it. I didn't think that it could sound any more clear. And I had, I think it was like a Linkin Park song playing and I was just blown away with the sound quality. So it is really, really great if you listen to that type of music. I listen to all kinds of music. Phone calls and music. For the music, you can get 37 feet away before it will start to fade in and out and it's not very noticeable at all. I've listened to the song that was playing that day hundreds of times and I barely even noticed that it was fading in and out. And then I realized the song doesn't do that. That's the headset. So I went and got a tape measure, went back to the same area of my house, measured the distance, and like I said, it was 37 feet. I did the same thing for a phone call, and it was like I never walked away from the headset. It was very clear. So be careful because you could possibly end up leaving your phone somewhere because like I said, for music, you have to get at least 37 feet away. And for phone calls, you could probably get further away than that and you would forget that you didn't even have your phone on you. When you install the app, you go to the Google Play Store. It's called Xperia Ear Duo. There's no ads, no in-app purchases. You install the app. The first thing it will do is pair your device. It's a very quick pair. If for some reason it doesn't pair your device, go to your Bluetooth settings, pair the device, and then go back to the app and continue on. The app will show you how to put in your earpieces, how to use the volume, how to use your Google Assistant, and then it will take you to a main page. When you get to the main page, you will see an option, update firmware. Don't do that unless you're having problems setting up the headset. Now, if you encounter this next problem that I did, because I saw a video and it said that you were supposed to update the firmware. I did that and then 
like I said, I had this problem. It went back to as if I had first taken the headset out of the case. All the settings that I had set up so far did not work anymore for the left or the right. I had to unpair the Bluetooth in the Bluetooth settings, uninstall the app, and factory reset the headset. You put both pieces into the case, take out the right piece, and just under the indicator light, you push and hold for 10 seconds. The light will flash white, and the headset should be back to the factory settings. You then put the right piece back in the case, go back to the Google Play Store, reinstall the app, and at this point, the next problem I had was that it would not pair from the app. But like I said, at any point in time, if you have that problem, you just go to your Bluetooth settings, pair the device, and then go back to your app. After you go through the setup, it will take you to a page that I'm going to show you on my phone. So let me get my phone and I'll be right back. These are the options that you will see here. And where it will say update firmware will be underneath where it says assistant. You have device settings down here at the bottom. And that is where I would start. So as you can see for the touchpad settings, Usually it starts off with the right side, but like I said, I've already set up the headset, so it is where I left off, okay? But after you install the app for the first time, it will start off on the right. So let's start there. All the tap controls, as you can see, are customizable. And those are your options. And then down here, you have touch and hold, customizable, and it tells you about the volume. And I believe that is it for this side. And all of your choices will be the same for those settings. On the left side here, as you can see, single, double, and triple tap are already pre-selected, and you cannot change them. And that's it for the options here. The only thing that's customizable for the left side is your touch and hold settings. And then you have that same list. For the head gestures, when you have it on, you can nod your head, shake your head, turn your head left or right, and the little blue arrows in line will move to show you that you don't have to move your head that far in order to get the head gestures to work. Respond, yes and no, will be pre-selected. Cancel readout, send head gesture sound will also be pre-selected. But you will have to turn on skip to next previous track and answer decline incoming call. Sound quality. I will leave it on the top, prioritize playback duration. The headset just functions better. If you change it to prioritize sound quality, then you will have to re-download the language and everything. If I remember correctly, you have to go back over some of the settings. I would just leave it right where it is because it works great on that setting. I turned on adaptive volume control. I have not tested that yet. I also have not tested dynamic normalizer. I've decided to leave that function off. And I believe that is it for the device settings. So then after that, you go to the assistant. At this point, it should have already asked you what language you want. It's going to tell you that the file is big. It's not really that big. I would say probably a few megabytes. And then every time you add a new language, 
it will download in the app and then after that it will go through a test so if you have assistant turned on then it will go through this list here and then if you have music selected it will start to play music after and it'll say something like let's listen to some music so i unchecked that box i also unchecked news uk at the top, those two options will already be selected. I'm not sure about based on your situation. I think that in the morning, it will still tell you some type of news from some country, probably the UK, maybe somewhere else on its own, even if you don't have news UK selected. But I noticed that that only happens in the morning. And it doesn't necessarily go down this list in this specific order but it will read off everything that you have checked. In here, Gmail and Messenger are already pre-selected. I turned them off. And I added my calendar and my message app. If you have it set to reply to message, with your, well, yeah, you can actually set it with your left and right, but I set it to one of the tap controls on the right. And when I tapped reply message, it read my last message from Messenger and then asked me if I wanted to reply to it. Sometimes it'll just tell you that you have a missed message. And now that I think about it, it will actually just tell you that you have a missed message unless the message is just coming in. Okay, so let me correct that. If you click reply to message, it'll say you have one or two or three missing messages and then it will ask you if you want to reply. So it may not actually read out the message. You just have to try and test that out. At this point, I kind of don't remember. If you want it to let you reply back to the last text message that you have, then you do have to set up your message app in your notification settings underneath the select apps for voice notifications. So you push the little plus and then all of your apps will show up on a list. And then you just pick all the ones that you want notifications for. Caller name readout was already turned on. It doesn't work. All it does is just ring and use whatever your ringtone is. I've turned it off, turned it back on. I still couldn't get it to work. There might be an app to fix that. I'm not sure, or I should say an app that it works with. But like I said, I'm really not sure about that. If you find one, then that's really great because I think that would be a cool feature if it actually works. But as it stands right now, for me, I have not been able to get it to work. You have six languages and you have two for English. As you can see, United Kingdom and United States. Every time you add a language in, like I said, it'll download right here in the app. You don't have to go anywhere else. That software for that language. And then, like I said, it'll go back through. It'll say hello or good evening, whatever time of the day that it is. And it'll go back to those notifications just to give you a test to let you know what you'll hear later on throughout the day. Your nickname, it will refer to you by your nickname in the evening, the morning, and maybe one time in the afternoon. After that, it's kind of random. Weather for current location, you have to have AccuWeather installed from the Google Play Store. That app also contains no ads, no in-app purchases, and then after that, you have to turn location on and then it will give you the weather for your location. If you do not download this app, then it will tell you that it cannot tell you the weather because it does not know your location. If you have the weather box checked in your notifications, if you turn the location on, it'll still do the same thing. So you need both. You need the AccuWeather app and you have to turn on location.
I'm just going to turn mine on whenever I use my headset. So that's pretty much it for the app. It's very simple to use. Anytime talk, I have not tried it. If I try it, then I might make another video so you guys can see how it works. Now I'm going to put on the headset. Hopefully I can do this quickly. And I will let you guys see the head gesture controls when I use my phone and also when I use my laptop. So I'll be right back. When you take the headset out of the case, your music will automatically start playing. Also, it will go through your notifications. So just be careful because if you had it set to allow volume, it will still be set at the same volume. So I'm going to unpause the music and I'm going to use head gestures first. When you go back to a previous song, when you look to the left, the first time you look to the left, it will start the song over. And then the next time you look to the left, it will go back to the previous song. And then if you look down at the bottom, you'll see that I'm getting ready to use my tap control for the left piece. Okay, so that was the single tap. And then also on the right tap, I will actually do the Google Assistant. Okay, so. That's so considerate of you to ask. Okay, so I have to pause for a second. I was not expecting that. I have never actually tested out the assistant on the video. So you guys heard my phone. And then when you stop hearing my phone, I could hear my headset again. So yeah, it kind of have <laughs> kind of has a mind of its own, right? Now I'll disconnect it from my phone and I'll connect it to my laptop and I'll show you that you can control YouTube videos with your tap controls and with your head gestures. As you can see here, there are two settings for the audio. The first time you connect your headset to your laptop or your computer, it will be set to the bottom setting, headphones, XEA 20 stereo. It will be very low in your ear. It will not be, well, it'll be clear but it will not be loud at all. If you want the same sound quality that you have when you're listening to your phone, then you set it to the setting above it. Headset X EA20 hands-free AG audio. So again, the bottom setting is what it will be set on. And if you notice your sound is very low, you just change it to the second setting. So I'll start it off on its original setting. That is where you will see it most responsive to your gestures and to your tap controls. Right now, I'm going to use the left ear piece. Let's see if I can get it to pause and unpause the videos. And then also the volume. And I believe I have to go back over here. I'll unpause it and then I'll control the volume. Now also what you may not be able to see at the top left when I go back over to that side of the screen is that a little menu pops up and you can use your mouse to pause the video or skip back and forth. So let's unpause it and let's see if I can get 
some of the volume controls to work. Okay, now let's try it on the option where you can hear everything like you're listening to music and having phone calls on your phone. Okay, so let's try volume since we're already over here. Also, I'll have to unpause it, so let's do the pause control as well. Okay, so I am pause and I can control the volume. And then over here, you will notice that it won't pause. Okay, so sometimes the pause setting will work on that second setting the headset XEA20 hands-free AG audio, and sometimes it won't. So I won't tell you that it won't pause and unpause, I'll just tell you that it won't be as responsive. So if you can unpause the video, you might have to manually pause it yourself with your mouse, and sometimes you won't have to. But if you're in the original setting, which is headphones XEA20 stereo, then everything should work flawlessly. And like I said, the sound is very clear. It's very loud for music and for phone calls. I really like this headset. It does take a little bit of getting used to. And I think that about covers it. If I ever have anything that I forget to tell you guys, I have a segment that I call One Last Thing. So sometimes I'll already, you know, say bye to you guys, have a nice day, and then I'll remember something. And that's when I'll come back in that segment on the same video to let you know anything else that I have forgotten. So you guys have a great day. Again, thank you for watching Upfront and Honest Reviews.